Hi, so in this video, I well, this is going to be part one of a series talking about how to prepare for the interviews if you are applying to Oxbridge this year um, in the 2022 cycle. Um, I'm going to split it up so that it doesn't get too lengthy and yeah, I hope this is helpful for you. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that when you are preparing for an interview, you really should be preparing, the mindset should be that you are preparing for university study as opposed to a singular interview. That interview is of course testing whether those tutors would want to be sitting in a room with you week after week for hours at a time, often in very small groups of perhaps one to four, and whether they, you would be able to you know, contribute something interesting in that discussion, whether you're going to have uh, produced a piece of work which would be interesting for everybody to talk about, so you and your, you know, your other, other um, peers in the same um, college group would have to be you know, sharing something which is useful for everybody. So what they're trying to test is whether you would mesh well as well with the other students they've chosen. So there's, there's a bit of a myth at Oxford, uh, and I guess Cambridge as well, that uh, each year group tends to have quite a similar personality sort of style, and then the next year group is always kind of similar as well within each uh, subject. And the reason for that is that the tutors consider really carefully how you would all work as a group because you have to remember that there's only going to be perhaps three or in my case there were eight of us but you are supposed to be very you know tight knit especially for the first year when you've got all your core modules going on as much as possible they want you to be able to work together um, you know lean on each other learn from each other so that is something they're trying to pick up on as well so I think that of course it does depend on each tutor, it does depend on each college and subject, but overall they're looking for somebody who has put the work in and then also is not going to be too shy to share their thoughts and isn't going to be too arrogant to not listen to others. So I would really recommend that rather than considering, okay, how am I going to look really good in this interview, I would think about how can I make myself the most kind of excellent first year student that I could that I could be. So aside from, of course, completing your A-level work, which is really important because I, I do think you need at least A2 knowledge uh, when you go into the interviews, just because of the type of questions that may come up, it's going to help you feel that little bit more confident if you've at least completed the A2 stuff for the subject that you are applying for. So let's say it's econ and management that you're going for, then I would expect that you at least know the A2 stuff of single math, further maths and economics. Um, it doesn't have to be for all of your A-levels if it's like biology or something, you know, that may not come up, but at least be really confident on those subjects too, uh, on the AS side. Um, I'll talk about why in a second. So yeah, so in order to prepare as a for first year in university, aside from making sure you're really strong on those kind of A2 uh, materials, I would also say perhaps um, have a look at the preparatory reading that each degree subject lists on their on the website as what they would expect their students to know before they arrive. Now I'm not saying like do all the readings, but you should at least kind of know, right, how is it split up? What are the different core modules? How should you be thinking about it? And then the second part, and this is I guess specific for all the kind of STEM and then econ and anything that contains any maths, but they all kind of, at least at Oxford, I believe, they use the same uh, maths prep book and they usually give it out over the summer um, and you're supposed to kind of go through it all before you come to the university. So it's what they expect you to know. And it's not a very difficult maths book. It's, it's, I would say it's easier than further maths and it's just pure maths only, but they do give it out. And I think that's a really good idea just to go through and make sure that you at least understand all the concepts in there. I'll try and link it in um, the description box so that you can access it easily. Um, so go through that box, uh, sorry, go through that book and that should be, uh, at least for the, the subjects containing maths, a good indicator of kind of where you are compared to, I guess, everybody else because they want you to be sort of standardised with the rest of the year. You can't, you don't really want weaker people and stronger, you know, you want everybody to at least have the same basic knowledge. So if you've got that, then you can at least know comparatively, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine to go into these interviews. So that's the first thing that I would say, go through the prep stuff, go through any kind of basic technical stuff that you should know from A-level or from, read, uh, from the uh, prep books that they offer. My second thing I want to talk about is if you, if there is any possible chance that there's going to be maths in your interviews, revise maths pretty hard. Okay, there's, of course there is the, the A-level stuff, and if you're not doing further maths, but you're applying for sort of econ or, you know, science, STEM, anything STEM, I would really just 
do the further maths, even if you don't take the A level in it. That would be really useful anyway to say you have further maths knowledge, but I, I would really go through that. Um, specifically, they will expect you to know um, statistics fairly well. It's a really common interview type of question to get in pretty much all subjects is like the whole cause correlation thing, things to do with statistics. So just get really kind of comfortable with reading lots of data and then quickly picking out, okay, what, what is this showing us, you know, limitations, any conclusions you can draw, that sort of thing. So uh, in, in that kind of range of things, I would say like some of the BMAT papers where I don't think they do it anymore, but they used to have like data and stats and stuff, and then you could, you would have to answer questions based off of them. And I think that's quite a good start in terms of the type of statistics questions that may come up. Of course, maybe a little bit more complex, but all within that range, right? Um, I would also practice uh, graph sketching. Of course, you can figure it out in the moment. That's you, if you feel comfortable doing that, do that. But if you can just uh, practice drawing, you know, different different graphs beforehand, that is also a really common type of question that comes up in any interview which contains uh, any sort of maths. Um, for the maths practice, because they will also likely give you sort of like more puzzle style rather than a definite answer type, I would really recommend going through the uh, Math Senior Olympiad papers and just practice going through the answers, but record yourself doing that. I think that's really important because uh, when you are talking for an extended period of time with lots of people listening to you, often in your language you can be saying a lot of kind of useless things, you might be saying vague things, you might not be um, taking your answer all the way through to the end. This is the kind of thing that is difficult to know just from other people's feedback. I think that by recording yourself and listening through it back, as embarrassing as it might be for you, it's going to really help you to, to see your individual weaknesses. It's almost like kind of doing a sport and then watching back what you've done to try and improve. I would really, I would really say that working through problems slowly, seeing how fast you're speaking, is it too slow, you know, this kind of thing you can only really become super comfortable with with practice and then also um, understanding what you're doing wrong. So that that's something that you could try and if that works for you to, to help you improve, I think that would, uh, uh, I think, be really good. You could also show it to other people that you kind of, um, that you think would know. Uh, it doesn't even have to be somebody who's an expert in the subject because ultimately if you're explaining any concept, even if they don't perhaps understand some of the theories involved, it should be logical, it should be very cohesive as a, as a whole thing, it should be coherent. So anybody should really be able to follow along with what you're saying. So that could also be a good thing to test out your explanations on younger people maybe. Um, they're usually the best judge because if they can follow it, you've done a pretty good job, especially if it's a complex subject. So kind of similar to that, when I say take your answer to the end, I you really need to practice don't just stop at the answer. What would be more interesting is if you could get to the answer and then say, um, let's say it's something, a game theory puzzle or something, and then you've got your way and you found an answer. Maybe you could say, hey, I've got the answer, but I think I could have also solved it this way. I think I could come up with a formula to get to this answer quicker. I think I could try and work backwards and see uh, a faster way to do it. So this kind of thinking is really showing that you're not just, you know, First of all, not just content with finding the answer, you really want to try and understand how to always improve and kind of learn more. But it shows really good thinking, critical thinking abilities that you are able to look at your own work and say, mm, that may not have been the best way. So I would really encourage you to, whatever you're doing, don't just get there and stop. Keep trying to push yourself forward. And if there's, uh, if you're finding yourself at a, until you find yourself at a real block where you cannot go any farther because the material is too complicated, then keep, keep, keep going. That's pretty much exactly what they want to see at interview is, and they will keep doing that to you. So two people could have the same interview question and one could get a lot further along than the other because one may one student may give up halfway through or they might get to the answer and stop, whereas the other will keep pushing forward. So you'll come out afterwards and you'll have a conversation and say, hey, what happened in your question? And you might find that one person got part A and the other person got to part B, C, D, E, you know, and then that kind of, again, gives you quite a good indicator of how well you've done in that interview, is how far you've managed to push the questions forward. It's not just about answering as many questions as possible, it's how far you can develop one question. So that's the kind of thing that I would practice before um, going to my interviews. The next point is um, general for everybody, every subject really, and it is to read the news. I would start doing that right now, and I would start taking notes on that right now. 
Um, so it's really important to be kind of uh, up to date on all current events, not because they may necessarily ask you and expect you to know lots of facts and statistics about it, but very often, I mean, these tutors, they will use current events to set up the backdrop of questions as a starting point to kind of get you thinking and then from there see you analysing um, certain points that they think are interesting for your degree, right? So it could be something that seems completely irrelevant. For example, I think in one of my interviews, the um, starting point was um, like the PISA education rankings, like the PISA rankings. Another one was about um, kind of the latest uh, operating systems for computers. And bear in mind, obviously, economics and management, I was not expecting any of those things to be at all relevant. But, you know, it comes up. Of course, they will still ask questions that are very related to your subject, current affairs wise. But you just want to keep up with all things in the news. So when you do read the news, try to every day go through it and jot down some ideas from each article that you find that you think, hey, this is really relevant to my subject. So let's say that you're reading something about, let's say, the vaccine um, problems with like vaccine supply and things. Maybe for like a biochem student, you might be more interested in, okay, how are they working out the efficacy of each vaccine? Maybe for a management student, you're thinking about, okay, why are there surpluses here and shortages here? Maybe for like a law student, it could be the more of an of an ethics based question of should we force the vaccine or you know something like that right so whatever the actual current affair is it's more about can you pick up on an interesting angle from your degree subject point of view and could you try and maybe think about how you would go about getting the answer to that question again maybe you could record that maybe you could discuss it with somebody else I, I, I mentioned the recording thing largely because I know lots of you won't actually have people that you could maybe have these debates and things with and so in that case you know it doesn't matter just record yourself and debate with yourself it, it's, it's as long as you're getting the practice in and practicing talking through these things that can that's really uh, going to be quite effective um, so as at the university, obviously, as I said, you are sitting in a room with one tutor or two tutors usually, and um, you're having a discussion. You should be having fun uh, or nervous, but you know as much fun as you could in that kind of environment. Um, and I think that is the reason that I think independent school students tend to do slightly better is because they're more used to sitting in a room with fewer, generally they tend to have fewer students in each class and things. So it's really important to expose yourself to as much of that as possible, of being kind of the person who's leading the discussion or, you know, actually playing a significant role in it rather than just answering questions and expecting them to push you forward. So that's what you really need to um, uh, be improving, I think, over the next few months. Um, in part two, I'm going to go through a bit more in terms of specific question types that might come up and how to approach them, but uh, and how how else to prepare because preparation is absolutely key. I think of all my the interviews and you know the questions that I that I got, at least fifty to sixty percent of them, I kind of knew the answer already from having read about it or having looked at the problem before, and that really does give you a massive advantage. Of course, then you probably have to push yourself a bit further they won't be content with maybe the first or second answer you give but still that can give you a confidence boost that you maybe need to share more of your other opinions and you know continue a, a discussion going so i i think for the interviews i can i'll probably focus more on economics on management and these types of subjects but uh i'll get other people to make videos hopefully about the other subject range if anybody has any specific requests so yeah, just a quick overview of some things that you can start looking at now. Maybe if you're just getting thinking about, okay, am I going to apply or not? Um, hopefully, you know, you can you can have a think about whether you would enjoy that. And if you would, I would 100% go for it. You've got absolutely nothing to lose. I find a lot of my students underestimate themselves, but there is so, you cannot know, I think, you can't judge from what you can see amongst your friends or you know these kind of comparisons just just really trust the process of if i prepare i can do it and i think that's true for pretty much everybody out there so um i will continue to make uh, some more specific videos about this uh, but for now i hope that was helpful um, to get you started